In this presentation, we're going to see how to input opening balances in Microsoft Dynamics NAV. So first, we'll start with an example where we upload everything at once. We'll go through a separate uploads, which is more realistic. Inventory with warehouse, historical and profit and loss data, and tools. So first, let's go to a general journal. And we're going to enter opening balances for the 31st of December 2012. Let's say our project start in January 2013, so we select the day before. And we simply key the different accounts, so we'll do it with just a few accounts, so one for um, asset account, liability account, and here I'm entering a fixed asset. So we bought fifty dollars, and we already accumulate uh, depreciated for forty dollars. Okay, so now we're going to select customer. So instead of putting the DL account, we we'll put the customer code and which invoice has not been paid yet. And we can put a different document date and a due date and an external document number as well. It is not mandatory but it is good practice to do that, to retain that information. And let's put on the same customer another invoice that has not been uh, paid yet. Okay, so we've put that in the description, but and on the external document number. So the vendors works exactly the same as the customers. So going, we're just going to create one for the vendor. Okay, and we could put all the unpaid entries, unapplied entries. So we owe forty dollars to this supplier. Now for the bank, instead of choosing the GL account, we put a bank account. Oops, let's go back. And we're going to split that between the amount in our last statement. So let's say in our bank statement, last year, end of last year, we had $10. And we'll put the un unreconciled. So for example, a check has not presented has not been presented yet to the bank, so but we have recorded it in our accounts. And let's put an, uh, another one. So seven dollars to the bank in uh, six dollars in the bank total. And now we need to put uh, an inventory account. So here we are not going to choose the regular inventory account because that's going to be posted by NAV automatically when we'll put the details of the uh, uh, inventory. So we're going to use the inventory adjustment account. So let's say we've got 20 
downloads inventory. Let's try to pause that. And that everything needs to be balanced. So here I'm missing ten dollars. Everything balances, same date, now we can post. Now we need to enter the inventory details. So we're going to go to the warehouse before let's have a look. We're missing two things the uh, depreciated fixed assets and the inventory. And so far the inventory has gone to our inventory adjustment. And we'll enter the details in the warehouse inventory item journal. So unless you're, you use the warehouse management system, which uh, we'll see that later, but here the normal case the item journal so we enter on the first item 8 and second one 4 and we can put we put the um, the the unit amount as well so here we have $20 that should exactly balance what we had before now let's look at the fixed assets So we need before it to change a setup on the depreciate depreciation book. We're going to untick all the integration to the GL because we already posted our uh, GL account for fixed asset acquisition and depreciation. So temporarily we have de deactivated it, and now we're going. To to use the FA journal, not the FA GL journal, FA journal. And we create a new fixed asset. So let's make just one. But you would have to create uh, all the fixed assets that uh, you have in your detail. So it's a car. We put the depreciation starting date and ending date or the number of years. So let's say we bought it 1st of January 2010 for $5,000 and we'll be consistent and put the FA posting date at the same date when we uh, bought it first. Put the date for the FA posting date on the second line, then the second line we call the same asset and it's going to be the depreciation. So far we've uh, depreciated four thousand dollars. So now we post it and we should be good. Let's not forget to um, indicate to change the integration back to be uh, GL integrated. So now what we need to do is to check to check that what we have done is correct. So we're going to go to the chart of accounts and we'll put a filter. We're going to limit the total for 2012. And we want to see just the accounts that where we have a result. Just to make our life easier. So let's go from the beginning. Your fixed asset we've got 50 and 40, 50 acquisition costs, so we'll go to the book value number one, put the correct date, print per fixed asset, and we're going to check that our acquisition, total acquisition, 
and depreciation. So 5,000 and 4,000 is correct. And you need to do it per group. So that's good. Now the inventory. $20 we see from the GL, from the chart of accounts. And we check with the inventory valuation. We put the same date and include expected cost. We do have $20, so that's correct. Now the customer. On this chart we have $30. So here we're going to, let's open, let's open a customer card. And we're going to look at the balance to date report. So let's find it. Okay, customer balance to date. We show the amount in local currency and we put a date filter. We do have the same amount, $30. So it's all good so far. The vendors will work in the same way as the customers. So we would call for the vendor balance to date account. And f finally, the bank account, $6. Is a chart we're going to check with the bank account card and we do have the same amount six dollars so it's all good and it's a good idea to save that as a PDF so that would be the ideal import but in real life we often have the GL balance late a couple of weeks after the start and we do need to enter uh, the details of the customer, vendor and the uh, inventory before. So here instead of having the detail in the of customers in the up, um, GL balance, we are only going to use one account and we We've created a suspense account for that, suspense debtor, and we're going to put the $30, so the total amount. And what we've done, we've created in another batch the detail, so that detail could be, enter be entered before, so customer by customer, invoice not paid. And the balance is just the suspense account. Warehouse inventory. If you use the warehouse management system, you can't import things with the item journal. You first need to use the warehouse item journal. For example, in location white, here we indicate as well the bin. So we just passed the quantity in warehouse item journal and then on the inventory journals we call the calculate warehouse adjustment that retrieves the quantity we double check that the unit amount is correct and we can post it it's possible to import historical data as well as profit and loss data. It works pretty much in the same way. Just the difference, like here, we've created two different dates. And that it does need to balance, to balance per date. So on, our, on the first account, 2810, we'll have two entries that as a total makes 100. And here for that, the uh, profit and loss data that could be keyed or imported in the same way. In Rapid Start Services for Microsoft Dynamics NAV, we have a couple of tools. Let's have a look at them. We have some that create journal lines. So that's the one for the GL accounts. Let's 
Have a look at that. We've put a filter on the direct posting. And if we look at the result, so one line per account has been created with no amount, so that would need to be filled in. And that would be the same for the customer vendor items. So we don't see that as a much uh, of a great help. What we need usually is to import things so from Excel and to do that we will use, we would use the uh, config package import from Excel with a table 81 and 83 so let's look at the uh, general journal line that does everything except the item and that's a selection of the field that could be used for Importing, importing from Excel the data.